Want to know why? Ask how. Howard the Humongous. Rudy Giuliani turned himself into a laughingstock November 19th when he threw a press conference at the Republican National Committee in headquarters in Washington, D.C., and rehashed claim after claim about how Joe Biden had stolen the election from Donald Trump. The most extravagant of these fantasies had George Soros, Hillary Clinton, and Venezuela orchestrating a global plot focused on big American cities, cities with Democratic mayors, to commit voter fraud and to steal the election from poor Donald Trump. Giuliani claimed he has amassed hundreds of affidavits from eyewitnesses to this fraud. But the mainstream media, in its profound wickedness, reports that in the roughly 30 court cases the Trump campaign has mounted so far, the claims of massive voter fraud made by Trump attorneys have been thrown out of court 29 times. The claims were said to have been discredited because Trump's legal team produced no evidence. So why was Rudy Giuliani repeating these claims and making a fool of himself? Such a fool that the sweat he worked up made his hair dye trickle down both sides of his face. He made himself a fool for the sake of repetition. And why would Rudy Giuliani make a fool of himself by arguing his first case in 30 years in a federal court in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, using testimony from a mere two Republican voters who felt they had not been given a proper chance to correct errors in their ballots? Why would Rudy Giuliani use the complaints of just two voters to allege an overwhelmingly massive voter fraud, a fraud that inspired an exasperated response from U.S. District Judge Matthew W. Brand? The judge said to Giuliani, you're alleging that the two individual plaintiffs were denied the right to vote, but at bottom, you're asking this court to invalidate more than 6.8 million votes, thereby disenfranchising every single voter in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania? Can you tell me how this result can possibly be justified? What the judge did not understand is that Giuliani did not go to court with just two voter complaints for the sake of winning the case. He went for the sake of repeating the Trump story of how Joe Biden had stolen an election that Donald Trump had really won. And he did not throw his press conference to get the attention of the New York Times, the Washington Post, CNN, or MSNBC. The nearly two hours of histrionics that got mockery from the mainstream press was in fact carried on Fox Newsmax and OANN in its entirety. And to repeat, Giuliani pulled off these stunts for the purpose of repetition. He pulled them off for the sake of repetitions that would make headlines. Why all this insane repetition of disproven claims? It's not being done to convince you and me. It's being done to rile up the true believers and to do more, to sow belief in an alternative reality. I've been a visiting scholar in the graduate psychology department at NYU. Psychology has been one of my dozen sciences for 50 years. I did my field work in mass culture by founding and running the biggest PR firm in the music industry. And when I founded the Howard Bloom organization, LTD, I took a lesson from psychology with me. We humans have very poor memories. We have to be exposed to something roughly 15 times before we even recognize that we're seeing it. On the 16th exposure, we finally think we've just seen it for the very first time. So I made sure that you saw my clients and their stories at least 16 times, usually 16 times a month. I called this the Chinese water torture approach to publicity. And I used the Chinese water torture strategy to get across soul deep truths about people like Prince, Michael Jackson, Billy Joel, Joan Jett, Billy Idol, and John Mellencamp, people worth believing in. But Donald Trump and Rudy Giuliani are showing that the Chinese water torture strategy can also be used to promote lies. Meanwhile, bad memory is not the only human limitation that Rudy Giuliani and Donald Trump are playing like a piano. 
we all have limited powers of observation. Someone really needs to get our attention to tell us what we are seeing. And once he or she does grab our focus, he can utterly change the way we perceive. You've probably heard of the experiment in which a bunch of test subjects were told to count passes in film footage of a basketball game. All they saw was the basketball. But a man in a gorilla suit had walked across the screen for a full 15 seconds, and 50% of the pass counters never even saw it. They saw what they were told to see. Let's call this the caption factor. We see what we are told to see by the caption. We often miss what's really in the picture. Donald Trump and Rudy Giuliani are using the Chinese water torture strategy and the caption factor to create an alternative reality. They're doing it through the pro-Trump media. That's Fox News, Newsmax, OANN, The Daily Caller, The Washington Examiner, Breitbart, and roughly 20 others. Nearly 80 million Americans voted for Joe Biden. That's a new record. But close to 74 million voted for Donald Trump. That's also a record. And it's a lot of votes. But it's less than Joe Biden by a whopping 5 million. And it's the minority of 74 million that Donald Trump and Rudy Giuliani are aiming for. Why? To stir this minority to a frenzy. To get them so riled up that they will hunger for an armed uprising. To get them so mad that they will talk of civil war. To outrage what Donald Trump calls my Second Amendment people. To infuriate Donald Trump's gun carriers. To gin up the ones who show up at protests with their AR-15s. To create chaos. But not just any chaos. Chaos in the key states where Joe Biden has won but where there are Republican-dominated state legislatures. States like Michigan, Georgia, and Wisconsin. Why? Because the Constitution says that the representatives a state sends to the Electoral College are to be chosen by the state's legislatures. The Constitution does not say anything about picking electors via a popular vote, the vote of people like you and me. That sort of voting was a lot less practical in 1787, when the Constitution was written. The popular vote for president didn't even begin until 1824, long after the Founding Fathers had signed our founding document. Thanks to the Constitution, if Trump and Giuliani can stoke up enough chaos, they may be able to get their Republican-controlled state legislatures to declare that the vote was too controversial to call and that the legislatures must take over the task of naming electors. Donald Trump, in fact, began calling election officials on roughly November 19th and flew two state legislators from Michigan to meet with him in the White House on November 20th, apparently to convince them to get the state legislature to name electors that would vote for him. Apparently, Trump's attempt to meddle in the election failed at least in Michigan, at least so far. As Trump attorney Sidney Powell explained it on Fox Business News to Lou Dobbs, quote, the entire election, frankly, in all the swing states, should be overturned, and the legislatures should make sure that the electors are selected for Trump, as in Michigan, which Trump lost by 155,000 votes, if the election is thrown to state legislatures. Trump wins. 21 state legislatures are Republican. Only 15 are Democratic. If getting Republican state legislatures to appoint pro-Trump electors doesn't work, Harvard's pro-Trump legal scholar Alan Dershowitz has another approach. Dershowitz says that Trump can use his changes uh, charges of massive voter fraud to take the election to the Supreme Court, a Supreme Court that Trump has packed with three judges who he thinks owe him favors and loyalty. Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh, and Amy Coney Barrett, all appointed by Trump. In Dershowitz's opinion, the Supreme Court can overturn the election and put Donald Trump in power for another four years. But that's not the end of it. If the Supreme Court doesn't work, there's a third option. Trump can use what he's called his army, his assault rifle carriers, to start street violence, to blame the violence on Antifa, and to use the mayhem 
as an excuse to invoke the Insurrection Clause of the Constitution and the Insurrection Act of 1807. Trump can use street chaos to call in the military and to declare a state of emergency. Then Trump can hunker down in the White House that he believes is justifiably his, for as long as he can keep the state of emergency going. Ironically, the doggedly pro-Trump Republican polling organization Rasmussen has produced the strongest evidence that Donald Trump lost the election and that Joe Biden won. How, in one of its polls two weeks after the election, 61% of likely U.S. voters, Rasmussen says, thought Trump should concede the presidential election to Democrat Joe Biden, only 33% disagreed. That's all Rasmussen. The will of the clear majority seemed to be with Joe Biden and against Donald Trump. Nonetheless, the Washington Post says President Trump is using the power of his office to try to reverse the results of the election. He's doing it with what Trump creates the best, a mess, a mess called chaos. And chaos opens at least three avenues through which Donald Trump can steal the election. Three avenues to a Trump coup. The avenues that go through state legislatures, the Supreme Court, and street violence. But Trump's attempted coup is also based on two tricks of the human mind, the Chinese water torture strategy and the caption factor, two tricks that Donald Trump is trying to use to bludgeon Americans into an alternative reality, an alternative reality in which he did not lose by over six million votes, an alternative reality in which he won by a landslide. This is Howard Bloom speaking to you from the future. It's your job and my job to make. Or, (laughs) want to know why? Ask how. And now for that infamous, sneaky, sleazy, slimy, seditious little off button.